Hello, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. At the conclusion of the last episode, I had raised enough funds to comfortably upgrade the vehicle assembly building. Of course, because of Kerbal construction time, that's going to take another 13, well, almost 14 days to do. Uh, still got other things, of course, being built. Uh, we got... And, oh, I guess I should mention this right away. Uh, I've renamed some things. <laughs> so, I, I got into this pattern, I'm sure you noticed it, that I was naming my vessels after the engines that they were using. Um, and then I started to realize that once I got into um, putting things into space, that started to get a little bit more confusing. So, payloads from now on are going to be named after their um, pro bodies or pods that they're using if they're crude. So this is now they stay this the they put Nick too. Ah <laughs> instead of, this was formerly the Spider One. Well Spider th well, we'll go there. <laughs> so Spider One has been renamed Stay Put Nick 2 and if I go into the tracking station, my only thing I've successfully put into orbit, hopefully that will change fairly soon, um was formerly called the Spacely one is now called the Stay Putnik one. Uh, boosters and rockets and planes will still be named after their engines, but payloads will be named after their probe cores or pods, as the case might be. These things are still being built. What actually is kind of I was half expecting with the uh, launch, with the vehicle assembly being under construction, that all these things would end up pausing, but they didn't. So that's good. Uh, so you can see we got some things going on. We also have, of course, the Juno 1. It's ready to go. Unfortunately, the uh, it's going to be a couple of days before the R&R &R mod releases Jeb and says he's ready to fly. Okay, you know, while we're in here, this is something that a viewer pointed out to me, and uh, I'll have to thank him for this. I've been using, of course, Kerbal Engineer to thrust to weight ratios and uh, delta v's and to design my ships but one thing i've been uh don't use too i always keep it in compact mode if you take it off compact mode you get a lot more things you can change you know your parent bodies whether you're in atmosphere or not and all that kind of thing but it gives you obviously a lot more information and one of these is torque right so this is the torque on the vehicle as it flies i'm a little bit surprised that uh, oh well anyway um and torque can be generated by off-centered thrust the thrusts the uh, thrust line does not go through the center of mass and if i take this booster off for just a second come on there we go put that aside let's take a look at our state putnik 2 this one does have a bit because this 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 uh is a radial engine i had to slide it in here and i did this by eyeball but you should be able to do this let's get our translation tool a lot more accurately by just taking a look at this torque indicator and getting it to zero so ah shoot i didn't have Control said that. Okay, let's try that one more time. So if I slide this, let's see, that's making the torque higher. And if I go this way, ooh, I had torque exactly. There it is, it's at zero. That is a much more accurate way in which to get that centered. And uh, I don't have to uh, test it. It should just fly just fine, so it should save me some testing time as well. So thank you for that suggestion. Put that back in compact. I get so stuck on uh, sticking in compact mode, I often forget. It's stuck in the way you do things, so you need people sometimes to point out obvious things to you. Alright, so... Why don't we... Yeah, we got this, but we got the Stiputnik 2 coming right up. Now, by the way, while oh, I'm warping this one, I have been doing some more playing with my Ascent script. So, let's see. It, uh, beginning here is all the same. Um, what this thing does now, it does auto-staging. Now, does this thing have... This thing has no uh, smart parts on it. That's good. And that'll... Rec uh, again, a viewer recommended, why don't you put in some auto-staging? And then you're like... 
Yeah, that makes sense. So I'll explain the auto staging bit. It's not that much. And then uh, I'll also explain how I clean things up a little bit. So first of all, there is a variable called old thrust. And uh, I've set that right now to zero. And what the purpose of this variable is, is to is every time we're going to stage, we're going to upgrade this to what's the thrust that we got right now. And then if the thrust drops, uh, that's an indication that a stage is just flamed out and it'll do the staging. That's the end of it. So that's that. So this variable is a global variable. You got to be a little bit careful because especially once you start using functions like I have down below, uh, if you declare a variable in here, then um, that variable will only be local to this particular function. There's other ways to get around this. Personally, I just like to have all my global variables just declared at the front. So that's why that. So right now the thrust is a zero. And then what we're going to do, I created a main program. Uh, I've been watching a little bit of Cheers Kevin again. <laughs> so uh, I, 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 I just, okay, I'm going to make this cleaner. So now the program just says main. And then the main is everything that it's going to do. Of course, all of this is the same as what you've seen before, except right here. Um, it's going to start the flight and it starts the pitching maneuver at a particular altitude. What does it start the pitching maneuver at? At 250 meters. So if you have any staging to do before 250 meters other than the launch, uh, this thing's going to mess this up. This script, by the way, is by no means bulletproof. <laughs> I designed it to fly my ships and the way I designed them. Um, if you design things a little bit differently, like for instance, you like to start the engines and then stage, this thing is going to get, it's just going to start the engines and then it probably won't do the staging, like for instance, launch clamps. Anyway, this sets, so it's going to start its pitching maneuver at 250 meters and then it's going to set that old thrust to whatever thrust it's at right now. And then it starts the auto stage function. So auto stage is down here, probably towards the bottom. Won't scroll past wherever the cursor is, so it's always kind of annoying. It's kind of annoying that it doesn't allow me to. There we go. There's our. Nope, that's locked to prograde. It's lower than that. It's down here at the bottom. And by the way, for. Oh, shoot. I got to change. Okay. I used. Ta okay. Anyway, I won't worry. I'll, I'll fix this spacing later. So here's my function auto staging. What it does, this is now in a loop. So this until is a loop. And it'll remain in this loop between this curly brace and this curly brace until our apoapsis gets to our desired apoapsis where we want to shut down the program, uh, which for me is 50 kilometers. Uh, it's hard coded up at the top. I can change that if I wanted to. And what it's doing is it's looking at the available thrust. So this is a uh, value that you can get from KOS. It's just how much thrust is the vessel now producing. And if that value turns out to be less than the old thrust, and this is an arbitrary amount, 10 kilonewtons, um, if, the, if the old thrust drops by 10 kilonewtons, it will stage. That's it, that's all it does. And it prints a little message, a little blank space, and then it just prints that we're staging right now. And then it waits a second, and then it sets the old thrust to the now available thrust, because now, of course, that's changed. And it's going to keep track of that old thrust. And again, if that, because this is in a loop, it's going round and round and round. If uh, the available thrust ends up dropping below this old thrust, then it knows that it needs to stage again. As always, I have not tested it with this rocket, so. Uh, I tested it in sandbox mode, and hopefully it will work. There we go. And so that removes the need for smart parts. Signal lost. Why am I always finding new ways for things to go wrong? There's no elect... what? How on earth is there no electric charge? Programs aborted because of signal lost. Uh, this is, why is there no electric charge? Wow. Okay, so this is launch number three of this. Um, I wish I had an abort just blow you up button. I obviously do not. That's not doing anything. I've boarded because why did we get a signal loss? 
Why did the electric charge go? Well, I know the signal loss is because the electric charge went, is at zero. Oh my God, please. I have no control. Do not go anywhere near the K. I think it's going to clear everything. This is why in uh, real rocket launches, they have an abort button that blows up. Cripes! That blows up the rocket. I have no such feature. Thankfully, I think we're going to be okay. I've got to figure out what on earth. This thing is jinx. Number three. Again, completely different failure than before. Why did that happen? That really could have been disastrous. Because it had not started its pitching maneuver at any or anything. It was just going straight up. It just happened to go to one side. I should probably just abandon this thing. Because I have a better probe core. I could probably build a better thing, but... It's kind of personal now. <laughs> okay, let's take this off. You know, I think I just talked too much. <laughs> I think while I was talking about the changes I made to my script, the probe core, which is the only electrical source, just ran dry. So we'll just add another battery here. Uh, I can spare the part count. That should do it. It's so funny. You can, you can play this. It's like, how many ways are there to fail a mission? If you think you know every way, this game will throw another way at you. So, okay, that's going to take just three days, four, almost four days to build. Um, I think I have a pilot that should be ready pretty soon. Jeb is just over a day away. Oh, what the heck, really? <laughs> My life is so hard. What does Scott Bailey say? Check your staging! Okay, we are off. That turned out not to be a big deal because all I had to do was haul this Grove parachute up to the appropriate altitude. The actual contract I got first, I kind of like this one. This is coming from Giving Aircraft Purpose, um, is to get to over 100 meters per second, get my vertical speed to less than 10 meters per second, and get my altitude to over 2,500 meters. Kind of like a test of your ability to fly just straight and true, you're right? A nice level flight test. I had to hold that for five seconds. Clearly that was easy enough. And then it was to get the drogue chute up to the appropriate altitude. Actually, I had to also get to an altitude of four kilometers, but then to a speed of over 300 meters per second. Quite frankly, that was actually pushing the abilities of this little plane. Something to think about. I've gotten a lot of mileage out of this Juno M1, but maybe it's time to start thinking about building something else. Final contract was also from giving aircraft purpose just to get over five kilometers easy enough and then it was coming back towards the uh, KSC to land, on, land onto the runway and it was around there and you may have noticed this already but I only noticed it toward the end of all of this that I am in a sim mode and my costs are clicking up. <laughs> this happened to me a number of episodes ago as well. I can only assume that it's a result of not quitting a previous simulation properly and the game just thinks you're still in sim mode. I'm not sure if this is costing me money or not, but oh, it sure is annoying. And once I came safely to a stop on the runway, the two giving aircraft purpose, missions completed. Of course, because of the R&R &R mod, Jebediah gets a week off and Valentina is still recovering from uh, her last flight. You know what I should do? I should just get in the habit of doing this. Valentina's got three days, three hours, and 48 minutes. So if I just three days, three hours, this is the three days and four, four hours. Why not use alarm clock here? Add an alarm. Val ready. And three days, four hours. Zero minutes. Boom. Yep. And I then I'll get an alarm when she's ready. All right. So uh, close that. Yes, the Striker SR3. Now the idea of this thing is to go suborbital. We'll see what science we can collect. 
Oh, that's right. I forgot how this ballistic script is shooting for 80 degrees when it gets to an altitude of something like 10 kilometers. So it's pitching over very slowly. <laughs> oh, we're starting to collect high altitude data. That is good. Oh, now it just locked it to prograde, and that probably will end the program, right? Program ended. Okay, so that's that. Okay, we are now in space, collecting all kinds of data. This thing should be recovered, too, so it shouldn't really um, need to transmit. So if it gets to the point where, you know, electricity is an issue, I'll just turn off the transmitting. Oh dear, I think I'm in trouble. Pitch up, pitch up, pitch up. I need to slow down. I do have control of this thing. There we go. Okay, can let go now. <laughs> the issue was just going so fast that those chutes probably weren't going to deploy because it wasn't safe, so I had to pitch up just to slow down. But it worked. Now I'm waiting to see if it's going to start collecting any kind of science. There we go. Oh, definitely it's doing some stuff. So what are we getting here? We're getting... Oh, I was joking about the temperature scan, but we're getting a temperature scan here, aren't we? Splash down at the shores. Nice. Okay. So we'll go until all those are done. No need to transmit them all. All right, uh, 37 science, that's not enough for a new node, but I think it did all right. I believe it is still worthwhile for me to push another one in there. So we'll go to our plans. That is the Striker SR3, yes. And that'll be in three and a half days, but in just a few hours, well, we get another shot at the Stiputnik 2. All right, so is this it? Is this going to be the one? <laughs> I am making no predictions anymore. No, I refuse to make predictions on how this is going to go because every time I think I've found every possible way for this to fail, I seem to discover a new option. Okay, at least uh, we have electric charge this time. So. Uh, what we're gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? I'm going to let's get our display panel up here. I actually want that. Oops. That I want. That one. There we go. Uh, we'll keep track of electricity too. That it shouldn't be doing anything until it gets up to space. Okay. So anyway, we're coming up to the part of the program. It should do some staging. Nicely done. No spark parts that time. Little message here. Staging! Okay. So the KOS script seems to be running well. Though I'm certainly not taking anything for granted yet, given the history of this mission. Finding new ways to screw up is my specialty. Okay, coming up to our next stage event. Excellente. Now it's up to the Cogswell and those little spider engines. We should go into our apoapsis, hit 75 kilometers. Back at full charge on the batteries, thanks to the Cogswell. Electricity shouldn't be an issue this time around. Though, uh, adding that battery did add weight, which reduced delta V, so we're not out of the woods yet. I don't think I have any contracts with this, do I? I think this is purely about... Ah, shoot, it's going to be... Let's see. Uh, nope, 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 nope. Orbit recovery, no. Nope, 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 nope. And nope. Okay, so we'll just get rid of that. Okay, our program has terminated our, our thrust, guild thrust. Miko, you know, that kind of thing. And we should be looking at program ending soon. So it's disengaged its lock. 
and program has ended. So the sense script did everything it's supposed to do. Okay, staging fairings. Excellent. Okay, that's that done. Let's get ready to extend this antenna once we have science to begin transmitting. And uh, yeah, I should get ready to really be looking here. Doing this from this way. Actually, we won't, we'll start collecting the data, I think, as soon as we're in space. But I might have to do some staging, so best be ready for that. Oh, to have a Kerbal Engineer chip. Or an upgraded tracking station, that'd be good too. Oh, okay. I guess it's not ready to go. That's fine. Let's get our... Probably get a little closer. It's ready for a staging event should it need, require it. Heart count is obvious limitations as far as the engineer chip goes. Maybe weight too, I can't afford that. Okay, we're getting close. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on, hang on, oh. Good job. A little bit of a screw up there. Good job. Whoa, not that much. Throttle, coming back. Can just get control again. Here's our periapsis. Okay, let's get ourselves. How much fuel do I got left in this stage? 37 meters per second. Should be able to just do it still on this stage. Actually, why don't I stage? Let's stage. And put it on. I still got 142 meters per second left on the probe. Then this stage will deorbit. go and oh that put us in a bit of a tumble <laughs> it's all right it's all right we're not near apoapsis yet and then we'll finish off with the come around to apoapsis again I'll start opening the throttle Oh, to have an engineer chip on this. This is fine, though. I am fine. We have this. Once that's over 70, we are there. Okay, that's it. That is an orbit. Uh, I should have queued this up. Let's start that radiation scan. And start the transmitting. Extend that antenna. There we go. So we are now doing... A radiation scan that is not it's just space low actually why don't we take a look at it it's gonna take eight minutes to do should easily have enough electricity if I did all my calculating right yeah, I don't know how much science is associated with this it's hard to tell isn't it Da, da, da. Oh boy, that took a lot of work. <laughs> 3.6 credits completed. Oh, is it done then? I guess it's done. All right, and it's been transmitted. I have to assume that it's done. Okay, so uh, I could deorbit this thing, but you know what? I'll let it float around a little bit. I can't be... I mean, goodness gracious, this is only my second thing I put into orbit, so uh, I think I need to enjoy the moment for a little while longer. 
Uh, let's see here. We do have some, yep. We have vessel complete message, just stage recovery messages. These are those boosters. Um, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's all right. It saves a little bit. And then I, I like this one. That's the middle booster. It got destroyed and tells you how much money you lost. <laughs> all right. Close that. Close messages. Close that. All right. Let's get back to the space center. And we're now 39 science. It's still not enough. But I think now, how far are we? You know, I got a good amount of funds. It's time, I think, to unlock some new parts. Oh, wait. Hang on, hang on. Um, I could probably get that vessel into high space. Yeah, I mean, I can do radiation scans. I've done low or... Well, I can get this thing into high space, I bet. So, uh, actually, speaking of radiation, um... Talked in a previous episode about, you know, Kerbalism adds radiation belts, and that's one of the things you have to deal with once you start getting Kerbals into space. You can, and I was curious as to where they were, and a viewer, always a viewer, you know, I should, Kerbalism, by the way, has a really awesome manual <laughs> that you can download, and reading it's a good idea. I should take my own advice sometime, but you can actually toggle on, there we go, I pressed one on the numpad, and there's one of my radiation belts there you can actually see the Sputnik one is actually crossing through it and coming back out the other side and you can add on there's a second radiation belt out there I should really learn this kind of stuff it's really actually like if you look you can see how the magnetic field is actually being affected by the Sun and you can really see this on number three I like that that's really cool actually is this I should look this up before I start just stumbling in the dark, but I'm wondering, is this just the extent of Kerbin's atmosphere, the exosphere, I think is the right term for it, being pushed out by the sun, where um, the atmosphere, the very outer reaches of the atmosphere about Kerbin is being shaped by the solar wind. Oh, some other time I'll figure that out. Again, reading the manual, good idea. What I want to do is get back to the Sputnik 2. And I'm going to have 108 meters per second. We'll do the best that we can. That should be enough. Okay. We are unfortunately tumbling in a bad direction. So I'm going to have to give it a little bit of thrust. Do this and this and just a poof of thrust. There we go. Now we're going in the rough, right direction. And definitely want this so I can see my apoapsis. Even if we get just our apoapsis up there, it should be enough. There we go. Thrust. Take our time, no rush. for 250 kilometers or thereabouts. This is going to be tighter than I think. Oh, SAS sure would be nice. Oh, I should really get those other pro... Oh, we are out of fuel. So, so much for that plan. <laughs> 108 was not enough. So this thing is... Uh, dead in space and that's okay it's never planned I'm happy honestly just to achieve an orbit <laughs> as sad as that sounds okay let's get back to the Space Center and you know what I really really do want to do is build something let's start unlocking parts money's not as tight as it used to be and build something using some of our newer stuff now I think Actually, one thing. Thermal, thermal, thermal. Have I? Yes, I have heat shields now. So let's see here. Um, for airplanes, this is the one I want. I'm orbit and recovery. I'm really interested in. I got some hauling stuff into suborbitals. I'm not gonna worry about that. 1.25. Let me see this one. I gotta get it pretty high altitude. Let's not worry about that. Also, build something. 
Well, I'm still limited by park count. Am I not? Yes. How long... Show high build list. How long until my vehicle assembly... Still eight days for the vehicle assembly building. So, no. I don't want to wait that long just yet. Okay. Okay, once the vehicle assembly building is upgraded and my park count limitation of 30 parts, then I can build boosters that can... Uh, do something a little more uh, lift more payload you know because I can put more parts on it and that will really help in doing more things so this we're gonna have to keep the weight down uh, this guy okay so we'll buy ourselves a cube that's gonna be our core cube is SAS has SAS still no reaction wheels um ba bump bump and we're gonna need a probe core on you Cube does have different. Ooh, ooh, gold foil. Let's go with the gold foil cube. <laughs> All right. Um. Well, let's see how we do. I'm not sure how many parts I have to play with. I do have. Do I not? A basic linear. That might not be dumb to go with. I, I might build something that uses RCS's propellant rather than, and I think I have small RCS cans. I want the smallest one. That would be the R10, right? That's 100. Yeah, yes, definitely the R10. Mass, keeping mass down is a good thing, but with this and with this, we'll unlock you. The unfortunate thing is, oh, I put the ant on there. That's not what I want, silly Billy. Control. Oh my gosh! So I unlock. Well, well, we'll use it sometime. We'll 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 center that at some point. Unfortunately, neither Kerbal Engineer or uh, the stock game will now give me delta V and thrust values, which is kind of unfortunate. I mean, I could get into the math of all of this, but uh, you know, obviously this is much easier so we have a new button down here called RCS build aid it brings up this little window let's tuck this over here uh, let's turn off Kerbal engineer because that's not actually gonna help us right now and actually it and it gives us all kinds of information this is great also for if you're using RCS for RCS even though here I'm really using it as a main engine while I'm thinking about that we want to change some of these don't we uh, we want let's show actuation toggles. We don't care about attitude control. We only care about forward and aft. And we're going to put our forward and attach it to the throttle. And this will allow us to use this like a regular engine. That is good. And in fact, we're going to dis. I, no, I think I need to keep that enabled. I believe I do. Yes. Okay. So that is good. Alrighty, and so this is giving us what thrust we have in different directions. All we care about is forward, so we're going to need to click until we get the forward, and there we go. There's our thrust. We have a great big arrow indicating that we do have, there's a bit of torque on here because the engine's not in the middle. We don't care about that. But what I do care about is how much delta V I have, 851 meters per second of delta V, and my thrust is 2.5 kilonewtons. I don't get a thrust to weight ratio uh, let's see that's 250 newtons on a vessel that's about 250 kilograms I think that's gonna be a thrust to weight ratio around one which is pretty good I'll, I'll get out a calculator and kind of verify that in just a second but I think that's going to be pretty good for that we'll deal with the torque later but I think that the delta V is way more than I need, so I can take out a lot of this monopropellant. Delta V around 200, that is more than enough, and my weight is way down. Remember, my booster can lift up to 800 kilograms. Uh, that's going to be awesome. Let's turn this off for now. Well, not quite so awesome, because 
As I was soon to discover, my booster can't lift 800 kilograms. It's 180 kilograms, and this thing's already at 70 kilograms, or 170 kilograms. One of the issues being that the cube is actually 20 kilograms heavier than the Stay Putnik, but I really wanted to use the cube. I'm sick of the Stay Putnik. And I haven't even got into adding like a heat shield. Heat shield's 75 kilograms, 25 kilograms of which is ablator, so you can remove most of that, but still that's over 50 kilograms there. And that's not to mention the 100 kilograms parachute that would have to go on this thing if I'm going to recover it uh, so this required some modifications one of which was to up the booster I ended up adding three radial strikers onto my booster now this up the payload up to around 275 kilograms this thing is still pushing it even though as much as I've stripped it down I, I, I'm right at the park count let I can't even afford to put a battery on this thing all right, so this thing is built, and I got into an issue with, uh, but I reduced the park counts to such a degree that I can get away now with three boosters. So on the top here, I couldn't afford a heat shield. It was too heavy for this booster. <laughs> I want to recover this, so what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to, um, plan's going to be to keep the fairing on until we're at a point where it's safe to reduce the fairing. Then we will disengage that booster and then deploy the parachute. We did build ourselves, so this is going to be the cube one, QBE one. And I really think this should fly fine. Its own mission is to get into a low orbit. Then we'll use the Codswell booster to deorbit the thing, use the fairing to continue to protect it all the way through until we're low enough in the atmosphere. See how it goes. That's all I can say. And here you are seeing it going in simulation mode during testing still. And you know, given where the length of this video is at right now, I think it's going to have to be next episode where we see this thing flying for real. But in the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.